Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're looking for a worm farming community that is super active and always willing to help each other, you are in the right place. Today we are looking at the African night crawlers in the vermi bag low mammoth. So there are about eight pounds of the African night crawlers in here. I keep this on top to make sure that the moisture doesn't evaporate off too much. This hole is also for if I have an outbreak of fungus gnats, I can put my fungus gnat trap in here and then all of the gnats will want to land on the trap and not inside the bin. Works pretty good. All right, so right now in my wormery here upstairs, it is 80 degrees Fahrenheit and also about 52% humidity. So this room is actually not temperature controlled in the summertime because this is where I have my succulents as well as my orchids. So what you're seeing here on top is the leftovers of my last feeding of worm chow. You can actually even see a little wormy digging down in here. So I'm gonna kind of break that up and then we're gonna have a look and see what they're doing. To me, it looks like they have compressed or eaten down about two to three inches. And as always, I will try and put the Celsius uh, for the temperatures and the centimeters or millimeters for the metric. So I'm just gonna move over. We put probably five gallons of bedding in here. And because it's getting warmer, these worms are going to start going through way more food. And that's one of the things that I have learned about the African night crawlers is when they are in their preferred temperature and probably goes for every kind of worm, but when they are in their preferred temperature, they eat an insane amount of food. So I always make sure that no matter what kind of food, as far as people scraps, you know, like vegetable, fruit, bread, that kind of thing, whatever I feed them of that, I probably give them about twice as much bedding in the summer. All right, so we're looking a little dry in here. It looks like the, the corn silk and whatever, they are working on it. So let's see, we had uh, the pineapple here that we're looking at, and then some avocado pits. And they are loving that pineapple. They're getting all in there. And then you can look underneath and see that uh, Look what they've done already. They're already inside of that corn cob. So I think today the topic is more along the lines of adjusting your expectations for the worms depending on the season. So whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere, this is rock wool from my hydroponics. I don't expect them to eat that. I'm gonna take it out. I just wanted them to eat the plant that was surrounding it. So adjusting your expectations based on your weather um, and the environment that the, the worms are in. So a lot of people, when they first get a worm bin, they're like, oh, they are always going to eat their body weight a day or a week or what have you. And that is really not the case, especially not with um, tropical worms that are very sensitive to temperature changes. Now, yes, if anybody's thinking, geez, this is really dry. I am in agreement. I think I forgot to come in here and put any moisture in this week. So they are probably not happy with me for doing that. So I think they've eaten all of the food. That's the only corn cob that I'm fine. Oops, there it is. There's another corn cob. No worms inside there yet. But I am going to go ahead and I'm going to, this is going to be a quick feeding today. It is gardening season after all, so I have to get back outside and take care of the garden. But one of their feedings today is going to be one of my chop and drop vegetables from the garden, which is burdock. It gets big, huge leaves. And so they're going to get their regular food plus some of that green. So now that we've gone through there and looked at this, I'm going to add some water. Now this is rusted tap water. If I had to use it right away, I would use the fish drops like you use when you're um, getting a fish tank ready that neutralizes the chlorine. But since this has been sitting for probably a week, then um, it is pretty safe to do it. Now I'm working the water in 
because when castings get dry, they do get a little bit hydrophobic, which means the water will actually just bounce right off of it. So I'm just gonna get that bottom part nice and wet for them before I give them their food. All right, so we've got the bedding that was in here previously that I'm going to get some more water on. And then we're gonna feed on top of this old bedding so that this has a, uh, this will be the quick food for them because it's already partially broken down. So we're getting a little bit of mint and then quite a bit of the burdock leaves. And this is inside my house. So the possibility of me bringing in um, any sort of exterior bugs, might have overdone it here. Um, any kind of exterior bugs is highly possible. But because it is a contained system, they're not going to run amok in my house. So this is going to be a good source of food for them. They are going to love this, as are all of the bin critters. Especially now that it's nice and warm, they're going to have this nice vegetable. Very easy to eat for them. The stalks will take a little bit longer, but considering how much water is in here, this will help keep the, uh, the bed moist. And then, as always, we're going to add the shredded paper bedding on top of this as a cap because if they run out of this, then they always have the bedding, which for African night crawlers is always food. And this does look like a crazy amount of food, but because that burdock leaf is kind of uh, rigid, it's not collapsing down right now. So the bed does, the bin does look super, super full, but that is just because the burdock is gonna need to reduce down a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some worm chow and some of the composted cow manure to this to add some nutrients. It seems like the African night crawlers are doing way better. When I do add that, they keep their size a little better. So um, even though I don't like to spend money on my worm bins, mostly it's about getting rid of free resources and keeping them out of the landfill. But because the African night crawlers are, you know, a tropical worm, I think it's worth the money to keep them um, healthy. They are. Although they do work for me, they are still pets. So this worm chow is actually oatmeal, ground bird seed. I have an entire video on how I make this stuff, which I can link at the end there. I'm just gonna scruff this in a bit. Last time I just poured it in on the top and uh, that seemed to not work very well. And then let me grab their manure. Kind of getting low on that, but this is to add the extra nutrients for the African night crawlers. I don't do this for my other worms. Most of the people that breed African night crawlers, I see them do this, um, like the garden worm lady. And um, also if Michael ever gets his channel going, he does recommend feeding this. So I'm trying to follow suit and do the right thing and keep these worms nice and healthy. I think we still need some more water. So let me go get another jug of water. I honestly didn't think with it being over 50% humidity in this room that I would be losing water this quickly, but apparently I was. So I wanna make sure that I am absolutely getting them back to the moisture that they prefer. Now, in case you're wondering, two gallons of water, which is about eight liters, give or take, uh, is, is quite a bit of water. There is a mixing pan below the bin here. So if that water does run through, it's not gonna get on my floor. The way I built this stand was so that I would have an easy, easy harvest, but then also that the moisture would drip down into the pan below if I overdid it. And I can put a link to the build of this system so you guys can see what it is. It is way better than the ones that they give you for free, like on the Urban Worm Bag. Um, the Vermi Bag website actually gave me these plans. So they gave you the free plans. All you have to do is go buy what is probably now $100 worth of wood. These uh, metal pins that hold up the bag did come with the bag. All right, so if you like the African Nightcrawlers or the Vermi Bag Little Mammoth, I have a playlist that I will link right over here. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.